Hi there, I'm Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. I'm here every Monday, 4.30pm, to talk about the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And this week, I'll be focusing on the Sky Sports show in Newcastle, uh, which saw Savannah Marshall, uh, in the nominal main event, retain her WBO middleweight title and move another step closer to an anticipated showdown with amateur rival Clarissa Shields. Uh, but the one that intrigued me the most, I guess, was the return to action after around five months of Chris Eubank Jr. Um, in his second fight under the tutelage of living legend Roy Jones Jr., who will almost certainly be inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame next year. He's on the ballot, and I think for most people, he, along with James Tony, are the two, and obviously they fought as well as pros, but they're the two standout candidates from the list. Now, I think someone said on Twitter, it might have been Steve Wellings, and apologies if I'm uh, choosing the wrong person, but I think he said, uh, Eubank in his fight with Vanek Abdian looked like um, someone playing Roy Jones in a movie, <laughs> which um, was funny, but I'm um, maybe a little harsh on Eubank. And I know a lot of the same criticisms came after Eubank's first fight with Jones, a points win over Marcus Morrison back in May, I think it was. Um, and he did seem to be trying some new moves and they were reminiscent, I guess, of some of the stuff Jones used to try um, in his prime and succeed on a lot of occasions. Uh, but the same critics now, and I don't mean Wellings specifically, he's a great guy, uh, but just generally the same people who are criticising uh, Eubank for being a Roy Jones impersonator, supposedly, were probably the same ones who are criticising him for not having enough um, aspects to his game previously. Uh, you know, we've, all, we've said about Eubank for a long time, uh, he doesn't use his jab enough, he's too one-dimensional, he doesn't hit hard, hard enough at the top level. All those criticisms, and I think he should be he should be praised and credited with trying something different, even if it is similar to the man training him. I mean, is that such a shock? If you're um, working with someone day in, day out, they're going to teach you elements of what made them so successful. It's just normal. Um, that doesn't mean that Jones Jr. can't also teach other aspects of the sport that perhaps he wasn't um, so adept at in his day, although he was adept at most things, to be fair, um, and a natural athlete. And I'd say Eubank Jr., if he does share um, qualities with his trainer in his prime, is that he is also a natural athlete. You know, he's fast, he's strong, he's got a really good chin as well, probably a better chin um, than Jones Jr. Uh, had, certainly towards the end of his career. But the difference is that Jones Jr. hardly ever got hit. Um, so until he started to go slightly over the hill, he didn't really need to prove um, that he had any credentials in his jaw. Um, whereas Eubank Jr., from what we've seen so far, and he's been in with the likes of George Groves, of course. Um, I don't want to say Korobov because it only lasted a couple of rounds, but he's been in with some big hitters and, and lived to tell the tale. You know, good, good chin, um, but is hittable. Uh, and that's something I'm sure they're working on. So against Vanek Abdian, he got a fifth round retirement victory. Um, he said that um, Abdian told him he popped his rib um, and that's why he retired. But then in a post-fight interview that we did with Abdian, uh, he told our Roy Kelly that he'd just taken a hard body shot and he'd come to the end of the road. He had enough. He was exhausted. Um, no broken rib, according to him. Um, and also emphasised that he'd taken a fight on just a week's notice and that with a full training camp, he'd be able to comfortably uh, defeat Eubank Jr. I didn't see enough um, in the five rounds from the mobile, slippery, Armenian-born German to suggest that he would get the victory over 10 or 12 rounds. Um, but he certainly posed problems. He was certainly elusive. Um, and Eubank was forced to hunt him down. Slightly disappointed me because Eubank used his jab more in this fight than perhaps I've ever seen before, both to head and body. Um, it slightly disappointed me that he said in the post-fight interview that he felt the jab was ineffective. If you're judging the jab by kind of breaking an opponent up and doing physical damage, then yes, it was ineffective. But in terms of um, establishing the distance, keeping himself safe um, as well from uh, Abdian's counters for the most part, and dictating the pace and, and moving his opponent, manoeuvring his opponent into the areas where he wanted him to be, into the ropes and the corners as the fight went on. And also the jabs to the body taking some of the strength out of Abdian's legs. I thought it was very effective. 
And the reason I was disappointed he didn't agree was that if he judges the jab to not be effective, he might revert to type, which is what he did in the last couple of rounds of the fight and go kind of on a seek and destroy mission. Now, Eubank looked a different class once he started opening up and throwing combinations. No doubt about that. But he shouldn't neglect the fact that the jab was the gateway to getting to that stage in the first place. Um, and I wouldn't want him to discount the effectiveness of his lead shot um, because it is much improved under Jones. That's one thing we can say for certain. Now, yeah, some of the more, uh, I don't know, some of the more elaborate moves um, that Eubank attempted to pull off at times maybe weren't appropriate to his style, but you can't criticise a fighter harshly for trying things out. He's got to see what works and what doesn't. Having the tools in the box is always useful, even if you never need them or they're not the appropriate ones for the job at hand. Um, so I'm not going to criticise him too harshly for that. But if the next fight in December is a marked step up, and I think it will be, um, I'm not sure who it's going to be, although Liam Williams uh, appears to be the front runner right now, then he will need, Eubank will need to show something that he hasn't in his last couple of fights. He'll need to be much more uh, composed, comfortable in his new style and will definitely need to start a bit quicker because while the jab was effective, he could have his work rate could have been busier early on. We know he's got stamina, we know he's got an engine, um, but he can be a slow starter at times. He can use maybe too many of the early rounds to have a look and assess his opponent rather than going straight in. It certainly cost him in that memorable fight with Billy Joe Saunders, for example. But not only that, it's not just giving rounds away. If you allow your opponent to get into a rhythm early on, it becomes harder and harder then to break them down. Um, so I think starting a bit quicker, certainly against Williams, who you know has also got really good fitness and, and a great skill set. Um, yeah, I think he's going to... I think Eubank's going to need to impose his physicality in that fight as early as possible. You know, Williams, former super welterweight, could probably still make that weight if he really had to um, against Eubank, who has, even though he shouldn't have been really, has been up at super middle and is a, a solid, you know, muscular middleweight. So I think um, he'll need to impose that physicality, that athleticism on Williams. And I think to do that, he will need to start quicker. I think he'll need to throw more shots. I think he'll need to use his jab even more effectively than he did against Abdian because there are marked uh, a marked difference in class between someone like that and no disrespect to Vanek and the Liam Williams. Um, so we shall see. The, the jury's out, I guess, on the new Eubank, but Liam Williams will tell us what we need to know. Um, if it is indeed Liam Williams in the opposite corner in December, you can watch a, an interview with him, a recent one on our channel, where you can tell how much he wants it. And he's already accepted the fight. He's just waiting to hear back from Eubank's team. Um, so also on the show, I mentioned Savannah Marshall. She um, got a stoppage with two seconds left of the second round against Lolita Mazea. Um, well overmatched challenger, it has to be said, although she came and gave it a real go in the first round and a half. Stormed out through the kitchen sink um, at Marshall. But Marshall is adept at, you know, bobbing, weaving, slipping shots. And she carries real power at middleweight um, for, for a female fighter as well. Um, so she blasted um, some respect into Mazea, who was noticeably less gung-ho um, in round two than she had been in the opener. And I thought uh, real credit to referee Michael Alexander, who, although there were only two seconds left in the round and referees aren't supposed to take that into account, and he was right not to, dived in to save Mazea, who was getting some stick against the ropes. And a lot of referees would have let it continue um, because there wasn't one massive shot that really put her over or anything like that at the point at that time. But you could tell by how open she was, how ragged she was, and how um, how much Marshall was now throwing her shots with real spite that it would have led to a very potentially very nasty knockout. So well done to Michael Alexander on that. And now Marshall looks ahead to Clarissa Shields. They're going to share a bill in December. Um, fight uh, different opponents of course <laughs> pretty funny if they fought the same opponent on the same night uh, and then go into early next year the showdown that we've been waiting for uh, Marshall of course the last person to ever beat Clarissa Shields way back in the amateurs um, and former world amateur champion Clarissa Shields obviously double Olympic gold medalist um, so we shall wait for that um, and the other major fight on the show was Huey Fury um, returning after a little while out got a fifth round retirement, two fifth round retirements on the same show, which is strange, uh, anomaly, might be a trivia answer to a trivia question one day. 
but yeah, Huey Fury got rid of Christian Hammer. Um, officially quicker, uh, I guess, than his cousin, Tyson had. Although that was a different Hammer, maybe a more motivated, uh, in-shape version. Although Hammer was still dangerous. Caught Fury early on with some big left hooks and rights over the top. But Fury soon established the right distance, um, kept himself out of harm's way. And then as his opponent tired, he stepped on the pace. And I would have liked to have seen it go a bit longer just to see uh, if Fury could have got him out of there genuinely without the corner retirement. Um, but he did seem to be getting to him, particularly with body shots when it ended. And very much like Eubank Jr. in the main event, we need to see Huey Fury in a tougher fight to really establish just how much he's improved over the last couple of years. Um, so we'll look forward to that. Um, I guess that was my main disappointment with the show. I thought it was a better show than their opener at Wembley Arena for Sky. Um, my only real disappointment was that the broadcast fights were all pretty one-sided. Um, I know they ended with a local heavyweight fight, um, mainly because I think Lewis Ritson uh, was uh, taken off the show at late notice due to illness. But yeah, we got to see a main event in Savannah Marshall that finished before 10pm local time, which was great. Um, but a one-sided main event and the other two fights, Huey Fury and Chris Eubank Jr. were pretty uh, dominant displays from the house fighters also. Um, the most kind of competitive fight on the show, and we could tell on paper it was going to be, so there's no excuse afterwards, was uh, Brad Rea beating uh, Jez Smith. A really good win for him, but it was only available in the early part of the show on uh, social media, not, unfortunately, on the Sky broadcast. So that's something they might want to look at going forward. We want competitive action in those prime slots as well as big names it's a balance of course as adam smith's alluded to on this channel um, but we do want to see more of that rather than just three big names getting easy wins so we'll wait and see what happens in their next show heat map still there um, i should say um, not going to comment any further on that uh, johnny nelson seems to have a more prominent role this time around which is a good thing i believe um, and again i thought the, the presentation generally and the commentary was really good um, so yeah, a, a step up from the first show and now we need to see step ups for the fighters themselves. Um, really appreciate the time as always. I want you to comment below if you don't mind. Tell us what you thought of the show, what were the highlights, what were the lowlights and I guess more importantly what you think of the new Eubank Jr. Um, are people judging him too early and too harshly or have they got it bang on? Is he trying too hard to be like his new mentor who he insists will be with him for the remainder of his career? Let me know what you think and I'll respond to some of the comments. I'll be back on Thursday um, to look ahead to uh, Jamel Herring against Shakur Stevenson, amongst other um, major fights. Look out on the channel for interviews with both men this week as well. We're, we're, we're there for you. Um, and I'll be back on the following Monday for the next Reflections at the same time, 4.30. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all then, Thursday and Monday. Cheers.